In this lesson, we will speak about the major versus minor products in organic chemistry reactions. Now in chemistry, we can say, for example, butone reacts with hydrogen bromide. State the major product that will be formed. What you need to understand is in that several organic chemistry reactions, two types of products can potentially be formed. One that we call the major product and one that we call the minor product. Now, the major product is the one that is more likely to form. Okay, it is the one that forms majority of the time. That doesn't mean that the minor product does not form, but the major product is more likely to form because it's the more stable form of the product. Now, how do you know what a major product looks like and what a minor product looks like? Before I explain the rules that help us decide if it's major or minor, I just want you to understand the idea. If I tell you, like in my example, that butone reacts with hydrogen bromide, HBr, I want you to understand that when I add, this would be an addition reaction. Why? Because I'm going from something that has double bonds. There's space here to add atoms. If I break the double bond, I create a single bond. Then I can add something here and add something here. So it's called addition. There's a potential to add the hydrogen either to this carbon or to this carbon. So technically I could do this, break the double bond, form a single bond, and I could add the hydrogen here and the bromine atom over there, or I could put the bromine atom over here and the hydrogen atom over here. I hope that you can tell that if I switch these two, so if I change the places of the bromine and the hydrogen, it forms completely different molecules. If I keep the compound, the product as it is here, this would be two bromobutane. On carbon number two, there's a bromo. However, if I switch them and I put the bromo here, the bromine here and the hydrogen here, I have now formed one bromobutane. So I have the potential to form two completely different unique products. One is called the major and one is called the minor. In the same way, if this compound over here, 2-chlorobutane, undergoes an elimination reaction, dehydrohalogenation, which would be the removal of the halogen atom and an adjacent hydrogen, I hope that you can see that there's a potential to either remove this hydrogen or I can leave that hydrogen alone and remove this hydrogen. If I had to do the first scenario and remove the chlorine over here and this hydrogen, do you see that I would need to place the double bond over here after the first carbon? And so this would be bute one in. However, I could also get the second scenario. So instead of removing this hydrogen, I could then remove this hydrogen and that would change where I would have to place my double bond in order to ensure that every carbon has four bonds. So what I've done is I've taken away the highlighted little bits now and that means that there would be no hydrogen here, no, hyd no chlorine here, so I would need to put the double bond here and this would be but two in two completely separate different chemical compounds. One is the major and one is the minor. But how do we determine which is which? When dealing with addition reactions, we need to follow Markovnikov's rule. Now, in our curriculum, you don't have to ever repeat the rule, state the rule. You just need to know how to apply the rule. So Markovnikov's rule, when you apply it, so when you do what Markovnikov's rule says, you get the major product. And Markovnikov's rule is used for addition reactions. So if we apply Markovnikov's rule, we get the major product. However, if we don't apply the rule, so if we do the opposite of what the rule says, we get the minor product. Now, what does Markovnikov's rule say? Markovnikov's rule says the major product is formed by adding the hydrogen atom, remember we're doing addition. So Markovnikov is always for addition. By adding the hydrogen atom to the carbon atom that already has the most hydrogen atoms. So how I remember this is we are adding to the most. Both these things, adding and most, makes you think big. It makes you think of a lot. So I add to the one that already has the most. So 
What do I mean by this? If I had to say we are doing the addition of hydrogen chloride to this compound over here, which is prop 1-ene or propene, how would I do this? Where would I put the hydrogen? Would I put the hydrogen here or would I put the hydrogen here? Let's see. So you would rewrite the compound. So I'm going to do one, two, three. I'm going to fill in the H's that already existed because they're not going anywhere. We are simply adding to the compound. We are breaking the double bond. So this double bond is no longer here. It's now a single bond. We break the double bond, create a single bond. And now the hydrogen goes to the carbon that already has the most hydrogens. So look at this carbon. How many hydrogens are there? One hydrogen. Look at this carbon. How many hydrogens does it have attached? Two hydrogens. So we need to add the hydrogen to the carbon that has the most hydrogens. So this one here at the end. So I'm going to put the hydrogen over here, which means that the chlorine atom would have to go over here. And this is what we call the major product. And it is 2-chloropropane. So if I asked you to form the minor product instead, you would simply ignore what the rule says. You would do the opposite of what the rule says. So you would put the chlorine over here and the hydrogen over here. And then, of course, you would fill out all the other hydrogens. But what about an elimination reaction? So Markovnikov's rule applies to addition reactions only. For elimination reactions, we need to use Zaitsev's rule. Again, if we apply Zaitsev's rule, we get the major product. If we ignore the rule, do the opposite, we get the minor product. Now take note how Zaitsev's rule is different to Markovnikov's rule. Zaitsev's rule, remember, is for elimination and elimination only. And it says that the major product is formed by removing, obviously, eliminate is to remove, removing the hydrogen atoms from the carbon atom, sorry, that should say from the carbon atom, that already has the least hydrogen atoms. So how I think of this is when we remove, I'm minusing and least, less, little, minus. Do you see how I remember it in my brain? So in this example, I am giving you butan 2 ol an alcohol. Butan, four carbons, two, the OH is on carbon number two, ol it's alcohol. And I am telling you, that we are doing the dehydration of butan 2 ol Now, in my video on elimination reactions, I speak about the different types of elimination reactions and I explain dehydration. It is the removal of OH and another H. Because think about it, if you are dehydrated, if you say to someone, who I'm dehydrated, it means that you need more water. So to dehydrate something is to take water away. So how do you take water away? You need to remove an OH and another H. Because what does that give me? That gives me H2O. So now the same problem. We encounter the same problem. I can remove the OH. That's fine. Then I need to remove a hydrogen from an adjacent carbon atom. That means one of the carbon atoms next to this one. So either this carbon atom or this carbon atom needs to lose an H. So either I'm going to end up taking away this hydrogen over here or I'm going to end up taking this hydrogen over here. But you can't just randomly decide. It's based on Zaitsev's rule. So Zaitsev says we need to remove the hydrogen from the carbon atom that already has the least hydrogen atoms. So I can either remove it from this one or this one. How many hydrogens does this carbon have? Count. One, two, three. This carbon has three hydrogen atoms. What about this carbon over here? It has one, two hydrogen atoms. So I need to remove the hydrogen from the carbon that has the least. So I'm going to remove this hydrogen over here. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, if I remove that hydrogen, this is what my product will look like. One, two, three, four carbons in total. Let's draw out all the other hydrogens that are not being taken away. Remember, we're taking away the OH and we're taking away this H. So all the other hydrogens must stay in the place that they were originally like that. 
Remember, we've removed this OH and we re we've removed this H. But you need to say to me, but ma'am, now the carbons don't have enough bonds. This carbon here has one, two, three, four, so that's fine. But the second carbon here has one, two, three. There's a problem. The third carbon here has one, two, three. There's a problem. So we need to put a double bond here between these two carbons. And this last carbon has four bonds. So this is called the major product. And remember, what did we take away? We took away an OH and an H. That forms water, H2O. So this is a dehydration reaction, and this would be the major product. So you might say to me, ma'am, then what does the minor product look like? Remember, the minor product will not follow Zaitsev's rule. So Zaitsev's rule says remove the hydrogen from the carbon that has the least. So we will do the opposite. And instead of removing this one over here, which we pointed out earlier, which had two hydrogens, we will remove this hydrogen over here, which has three hydrogen. So we'll take away this one. We'll remove this one. Let's just draw it in and scratch it out like that. We'll take away this one. We'll leave this one. So your minor product will look like this. Four carbons, fill in all the H's that are still there that we did not take away, like that. And just take note of how the position of the double bond will need to move because I've removed hydrogens from these two carbons. So the double bond will need to move there. That would be the minor product. It has a completely different structural formula and name. Okay, so I hope that that helped you understand the difference between major and minor. Let's go through all the different addition reactions, elimination reactions, and substitution reactions. And I'll give you examples and we'll practice. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.